donc Jean-Paul Lomont, professeur roboticienne, Académie des sciences, Académie des technologies, directeur CNRS, commissaire de l'exposition permanente robot à Univers Sciences. Maintenant, Cécilia Laski, elle est aussi prof de biorobotique à l'Université et à l'École supérieure Santana de Pise. Elle nous parlera de la nature à la robotique et retour. Merci, Cécilia. Merci. Uh, first of all, I apologize that I can't speak French, so sorry for this, <laughs> but I'm sure the students will understand English, uh, well, hope so, sorry for that. So we heard that Leonardo studied nature a lot, studied biology, especially for painting, or he started with this because he was not happy with the descriptions of the human anatomy to, to do his paintings. But then he also studied uh, uh, biology, nature, for engineering, for building his machines, especially the flying machines we have seen already. Actually, some, uh, or maybe many of uh, Leonardo's machines were never built. They didn't work. Probably there was a technological gap. So with the materials that he used, like uh, wood and ropes, probably it was difficult to build some of the machines, for example, the flying machines. And this group in Ontario demonstrated that with uh, the technology that we have today, uh, Leonardo's machine could work. This is a Leonardo's ornithopter, and he could fly with these uh, flapping wings uh, for almost 20 seconds. But actually, uh, when you build a machine based on the observation of living beings, you learn a lot on this living being. So Leonardo, at the same time, explained a lot about the biology, about nature, by building uh, his machines. And this is actually what still happens in engineering. So we look at biology to have new technologies, to develop new technologies, but at the same time, when we build a new technology based on the observation of nature, we learn a lot on the living uh, systems. Uh, this is what we call bioinspiration or biomimetics in engineering. Uh, you probably know several examples, so you probably know this one, I'm sure you all use this, uh, this kind of technology. Uh, here, an engineer observed that uh, um, a plant burr could attach to the fur of his dog quite firmly, and then it could be removed. So he observed this plant burr, he found uh, small hooks, and he invented Velcro. So I'm sure you all know this, and uh, he patented this invention and became rich. And in robotics, we try doing the same. There are many examples. This is one of them. Uh, and it's quite interesting because it's a, a robot that can climb over walls because uh, uh, its feet are inspired to, to the, I mean, they really get the principle of adhesion of the gecko feet. This is a key uh, issue, understanding the principles in the living beings. This is another example that I'm sure you know, but probably you don't know that it is bio-inspired. Here, this engineer is observing a human bone and he finds, finds that there are many, um, how can I say, empty spaces in, in the human bone. And this reduces the weight a lot, of course. And the parts that you see inside are not randomly oriented, but they are oriented along the uh, lines of force acting on the bone. Uh, do you know who this engineer is? Uh, this is a fell. 
and actually he uh, solved uh, his problem of building the tallest tower in the world at that time without having it collapsing under its own weight because the material used was iron, so it was very, very heavy. And he did the same as in the human bones. He oriented this uh, tra trabecula along the lines of forts and he built the uh, Tour Eiffel. So there are still so many lessons that we have to take from nature for robotics. Uh, uh, we want to learn how animals can do things like this, so how complex systems like animals or even plants uh, and like our robots can uh, work efficiently and effectively in a complex world. This is, these are the lessons we want to take from nature. Uh, in, uh, in my institute uh, uh, in Italy, we studied a very special animal, very special for me, uh, because uh, it is a completely soft animal. It's uh, the common octopus. So its body can deform a lot, but they can also grasp objects, manipulate objects, and they can walk underwater. Walking underwater doesn't make sense. It's not efficient with our legs. But the octopus can do that very efficiently because it can shorten and elongate uh, its, its arms. So we uh, tried to understand the principle and we demonstrated the principle with this simple soft robot. It's made in silicon, there is a flexible cable inside. So shortening and elongate is very simple, it's just one motor. Uh, that, uh, that can pull this flexible cable inside. And with this simple prototype, we could test the principle. So we built uh, this, uh, this small robot, uh, vaguely in the shape of an octopus, that can walk underwater, can work, walk on the, on the sea bottom and explore uh, tiny spaces, for example, and without damaging the sea floor. Um, but the principle is not enough for engineering. You need to build a mathematical model that uh, explains the principle. And we built a mathematical model for underwater uh, lagged locomotion. And we built another prototype. This time you don't need that it is in the same shape of the octopus because what is important is that you use the mathematical model inside it. So we built this other prototype for National Geographic for this uh, uh, mission on, uh, on a shipwreck. It's not very deep, 12 meters or, or so. And we showed how the, this uh, robot could walk on the sea bottom. You see, uh, it's quite efficient uh, in terms of energy and very simple to control. And another important thing is that it can uh, stay in the same location, completely steady, completely still, without consuming energy. You see in this picture, this is the picture taken from the, from the robot. Everything is moving around it, but the robot is completely still. This is quite uh, useful underwater, especially if you don't need to use energy. This is an evolution. Uh, this is uh, silver too, that one, the previous one was just silver. And it uh, uh, also takes some inspiration from crabs. So it has articulated uh, legs, as you see. It can go down to 200 meters of depth. Uh, and there is a part that stay, stays on the surface. You see it here, so it can communicate with a computer with this surface part of it, and it has uh, some small probes, you see, under the robot, uh, so the robot can push them down in the sand and take samples to check if uh, there are microplastics. So you know that this is a quite important problem today, and uh, uh, searching for plastics in the sediment, in the sand, is also very, very important. So, um, 
with my inspiration, what I see as the progress of robotics is a new generation of robots that are more similar to living organisms and that can grow, learn, evolve like, like living beings and uh, also self-heal, find their own energy in the environment and biodegrade at the end of their life. Um, so to, to help us in, in many different ways, but also preserving nature itself, as we have seen. This is the place where we do our research in Italy, in Livorno. And I need to thank the funding agencies, but especially the people working with me. And uh, I thank you for your attention. <laughs>